Well, it is back to school for many across the Motu today, but it won't be learning as you know it. Children from year four and above will be masked up, and interactions between different groups of students will be limited. Many schools are busy forming plans on how to keep teaching when Omicron swamps the community. With us now is Sandy Hastings, at Canterbury Primary Principals Association President, and Chris Abercrombie, Post-Primary Teachers Association Vice President. Uh, good morning to you both. Tēnā Good morning. Morena. If I start, if I start with you, uh, Sandy, uh, right, let's start first with teachers. Have you got all the teachers you need, given that we've had the mandates, that's all played its way through now? Have you got the staff you need? There's no gaps? Uh, we're, we're in a really positive position, um, and I think that most schools around the Motu will have been able to sort that. There will still be one or two who are um, looking for staff, and that's not unusual at this time of the year either, because things can happen quite quickly over the over the holiday period. Chris, have you got enough relievers ready to go should you start to lose teachers with isolation and, and the virus? Um, at, at this stage, it, it definitely should be able to happen. But if it gets uh, more, you know, when, when it gets fully fully going, um, there could be issues in certain areas of accessing relievers. Um, we know there's already shortages in some areas, so um, it could could be an issue as, as we move forward. But schools will be dealing with it as as best they can. Sandy, if I ask, perhaps start with you with the, the younger children at primary school. Where is the thinking at with the masks and the compliance? Are you worried about that? Uh, no, look, schools are in the business of education and we're in the business of um, adults demonstrating and um, role modelling the behaviour that we're expecting from our students. So the fact that the staff will all be wearing masks, um, this is going to become our new, new normal. No one likes wearing masks. Adults don't and kids are going to find it tricky too and we just work with one another Lots of outside breaks um, so that they get time to take their masks off. I think we can do this. Have, will there be access to masks for those who perhaps haven't got them or can't afford the disposable ones? There, there will need to be so that we can make sure that students um, do keep masks on. We're expecting information from the Ministry of Education today about mask supplies for schools. And have you had many people seeking exemptions? I mean, I'm aware of... People on social media saying that there's been attempts by some who are who are hostile towards masks to try and get exemptions. Is that an issue or not? Um, I'm sure there will be um, individuals who are not wanting their children to wear masks, and schools will work through those on a case by case basis. But I think we can expect that largely everyone wants to see us all stay safe. For secondary schools, uh, um, look, masks is something that you should be able to handle all right. The, the students are a bit older and maybe you can control them a little bit better. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, as, as Sandy said at the start, it's all about the support and education and making sure everyone you know, understands the, the reason why and why we're doing it and just um, role modelling and, and all those good things that, that teachers do and schools do. So um, that, that's sort of the, definitely the plan. And as I say, um, a lot of teachers have already got knowledge of this from when Auckland had to uh, wear masks at school, so it's, it's not new for a lot of us. How do you keep uh, the students in separate groups? Uh, in a secondary school with different uh, classes changing all the time, that would be pretty difficult, wouldn't it? Um, it, it, is, it is more on the, on the difficult side, but the things you can do, you think about entry and exits of, of your, your teaching blocks, of your classrooms, staggering lunch times. There's lots of different sort of things you can do to, to minimise it, but as you say, it is a, it is a bit more um, a logistic challenge at secondary than it is at primary. And Sandy, what's the thinking? How do you prepare for that day when you get the phone call to say someone has got COVID, they may have had it for three or four days and a bunch of students may have been exposed, you have to try and work out where and who's at risk. Uh, what are the plans for that? I mean, it sounds like a nightmare, frankly. Um, it does. And we, I mean, that, that's the idea of trying to keep students in their learning groups as much as possible. And each each school will have a plan around how they can best logistically organise groups so that they're not doing too much mixing and crossing over. Um, 
And yes, when that day happens, there will be uh, a percentage of students in, and staff in each school that are going to have to move into an online learning situation. And most schools have, or all schools have been in that online learning situation last year, so we're, we're geared up for that. Our, our mm. goal is always to keep face-to-face learning going for as long as possible. Sandy Hastings, thank you very much for that from the Canterbury Primary Principals Association, the President, and Chris Abercrombie from Post Primary Teachers Association, uh, the Vice President there. Appreciate your time, uh, both of you, this morning.